Love Them Knives channel, and we've got Trader's Corner on the 10th of every month, and it's the 10th of June, and man, it's 103 degrees outside, but I got the Mr. System on it. You see the mighty clouds of joy? No, that's not Mount Lemon on fire. I mean, Push Ridge over in Oro Valley. Yeah, that's on fire. It's on fire. And from my house, I can see the flames. That's impressive. Good luck getting up in them mountains and putting that son of a gun out. But if you get thirsty, I'm going to bring them up some of these, you know, because I'm sure they get thirsty, those hotshot crews up there. Oh, that, oh man, that's a crispy boy. Mm. Okay, so I got the Mr. System on, so it's nice and cool in here. Plus, I got the shade pulled down because the sun's going down. I'll get this posted on the 10th, by God, one way or the other. I got things to tell you about. I just don't know what the hell it is. Um, oh, did you notice something? This is called a, uh, a, a hat. It's something you put on your head, okay? And I'm just being an asshole. I need more of those. Um, love them knives, and they're in... They say sharp on the back, gray on the back, green on the front, stonewashed, kind of ratty tatty, you know, drag down the road type of look. And they're not cheap, okay? These are not cheap little plastic mesh in the back with the little snappy snaps and things like that. Oh, by the way, that's... <laughs> uh, but these are $18 delivered, and I'm paying the shipping, and guess what? I'm going to give you, not the can, but... Yeah, the holder. One of those with the cap. And I pay the shipping. Does it get any better than that? It Apparently it doesn't because I started with 50 of them. I'm down to about 20. So if you want one, email me. Lovethemknives at gmail.com And I'll send you a cap. I'm not sure if you're brave enough to wear one. Okay? Because here's my comment. If you want to pause and read. From... Somebody, when I announced it during my Mavro Knife uh, Spectre thing, which is, I couldn't help but wonder, is your hat another example of clothing that a white person could wear in America without worrying about the statement it makes, unlike some other races and ethnicities that would have to think twice? And I pondered that question, and then I said... Get me some of that, okay? Kiss my ass. I am so sick and tired of this race baiting shit. Super Steel Steve was right. You know what he said? Race isn't your skin color. It's your socioeconomic status. When you're LeBron James and you got a hundred million dollar house in Bel Air, ain't nobody gonna put a knee on your neck. Uh-uh. Oprah, uh-uh. Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh-uh, doesn't matter, see? So, yes, it is all about money. Always been about money. And while you're doing this little stupid thing with Anderson Cooper and Rachel Maddow and all this shit, the big pharma, big financial, big money is still picking your pocket. There's power out there. You're just talking about the wrong shit, okay? this racial unrest we've had this since the 50s or since god made dirt there were real civil rights activists back in the day okay there there was times when drinking fountains were separated bathrooms restaurants hotels all that no no any no, whatever so i mean i know they try and make it a race thing it's not a race thing it's a socioeconomic thing and when people have the opportunity to move up in socioeconomic groups, then they become more liberated and able to live in communities that are not so oppressed and, you know, wrought with um, fear and crime and things like that. It's really sad. Sad. But here you go. Cold steel, right? So what does it say? Cold steel with a big knife jamming through it saying, anytime, anywhere. But I don't know if you're white, you better not be wearing that hat because you should be ashamed of yourself. Damn racist. Okay. I just. 
not about race folks it's about money always been about money so went around with the wife the other day and yesterday we're in around we ended up at frankie south philly and we had cheesesteaks it was great man those are good cheesesteaks and uh but we went first to Cheddar's Scratch Kitchen. It's a restaurant. We really like it. The food's really good. And they have locations around the country. Okay, so it's kind of a franchise place. But the food's really good. They have like probably 50 or 60 tables in that restaurant. Pretty big. Five of them were occupied. Scattered. I walked in, saw 80% of the tables are open. I go, yeah, yeah, table for two. That'll be a 30-minute wait. Because they're wearing masks and all that shit. It's social distancing. That is so bullshit. That is so bullshit. So I said, peace and I'm out. Going to Frankie South Philly. Walk right in, order a sandwich, sit down at a table that's six foot away from somebody else. Not 25 foot, not 50 foot away. Okay? Not, it probably wasn't even six foot away. It's probably four foot away. Ate my Philly cheesesteak. Wonderful time. I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not wearing gloves. I'm sick and tired of it. I did the math. Here's our death rate. Divide 320 million by 115,000 deaths. Or 115,000 deaths by 320 million. Okay? Okay? Point oh. Okay. Linus in Sweden. I talk to him all the time. Guess what? There's their death rate. The media. You read the media? The media says... The, the, the death rate in Sweden is devastating. It's shocking. It's, and I always tell him that and he just laughs. Okay, They did nothing. They did nothing. There's their death rate. Okay, So if you take his percentage times our population, instead of 115,000 people, we would have this many dead. But we would also have $6 trillion more and 45 million people still working and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of small businesses not going bankrupt. Just saying, ever since COVID, it's kind of funny how our death count goes too. Ever since COVID started, nobody's dying of pneumonia in the hospitals. On a normal year, Okay, a normal year, 35,000 people a year die in the hospital of pneumonia. Nobody's died in the hospital of pneumonia since COVID. 100,000 people a year die in the hospital of HAIs, hospital acquired infections. Look it up. Look it up. Don't believe me. See, oh, it's, it's just weird. You know, die in a car accident. If you were next door to a person with COVID, it's a COVID death. So. I'm not buying any of it. I don't care. I'm not going to live in a world where I got to wear a mask. So I'm sorry. If you think I'm going to get billions of people killed because I'm not protecting others, then they don't need to be out. If you're fragile and you're susceptible and you've got, you know, you're 85 and you've got lung problems and this and that, don't go out. I mean, just don't go out. Okay. But our young, healthy population needs to be out there. We need to gain herd immunity. You ever heard of that? Because they've been talking about it the whole time, and yet it all gets blown away to the side. We need to shelter. No. Hi, my name is COVID-19. I'm going to be outside waiting for you. Okay? And until enough people get it and get over it like they're doing in Sweden, you won't build any immunity to it through the, through the population. So it'll, it'll still be there. It'll just be waiting. As soon as you open up, the increase in infection will happen. And it's happened in Arizona. We opened up second week or first week of May and the infection rate is up. The governor goes, we expected that. I mean, people are sheltering in place. You come out, you'll have some infection happen. I agree, okay? People gotta get through it. Well, people will die. People die every day, buddy. That 7,000 people a day die in the United States of various things, car wrecks, suicide, whatever. 7,000 a day. What's that, 200,000 a month? So, I mean, we, yes, we will all die. I guarantee you everybody listening to me is going to die. When? Don't know. But it's not Ebola. You're not going to bleed through the nose, the eyeballs, and the ears and die screaming. No. 
This is, this is a cold or flu virus. We lose 60,000 a year during that. But elderly people die all the time. They go in there, 50% of our casualties are nursing home deaths. People, look it up. How long is the average stay in a nursing home before somebody dies? Three or four or five months, that's it. So if they're in there, they're kind of on schedule anyhow. It's, it's tough, but until we get a vaccine, we can't just put 50 million people out of work. Do you get me? And, and crash the entire economy. It, it just doesn't make sense. And it didn't make sense to Sweden. They never really shut down Iowa, North, or, North or South Dakota, Montana, Kansas. Uh, you know, a lot of those didn't have shelter in place. I lived in Oklahoma. My son does... Nah, they didn't have near the stuff there at all. Uh, so the Midwest, yeah, made sense. Made sense, okay? And shut down everywhere doesn't make sense, okay? Different population densities, etc., etc. But, you know, you hear all these doctors and the media is trying to scare you. This is called control because if it's, if it's okay for six or seven hundred people to attend George Floyd's funeral, all bunched shoulder to shoulder together. No social distancing. And but I can't go to church. I can't even go to church and six sit ten foot apart from somebody. I can't even go. Protesting? Not a problem. Shoulder to shoulder, bunch, hugging, dancing, spitting on each other, whatever. Not a problem. But before those those protests if you were out without a mask in certain communities, you'd be arrested. So obviously there's something more than health policies being enforced because they're not enforcing them in, certain, in many, many occasions. So I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I don't care what you feel about it. You want to watch Anderson Cooper and Rachel Maddow and all those, not only race baiters, but uh, those people who are telling you about COVID and how you're going to die, and they're all separate in these different studios and shit. They're full of shit. Okay? I ain't living in a world like that, and I'm not going to believe that shit, because if you really do the research and you watch some of these doctors and immunologists talk, yeah, you'll know more. Got cool news. Uh, really, uh, a lot of exciting things. Of course, Blade show is going to be in August, not in June. So I'm going to go to Blade. And if you're going to go to Blade, I need to know because I need your credit card information. If you're not going to show up and buy the beer, at least I, I got your credit card so I can so I can buy the beer for myself. And don't worry, I'll buy drinks for everybody. So, you know, you know Super Steel Steve, whoever, Slicey Dicey. <laughs> um. But that ought to be a good time for one and all. Looking forward to meeting Sean Hassan there, who's Tepe Designs and also going to represent Tucson. Tucson, they make some really good knives too. And this is my 191 Gulper. I think this is the 191 or the 197, one or the other. Gulper by Mazwan Mokhtar in S90V. And it doesn't have any billboarding on it because it's a classy, classy knife. And they put carbon fiber on the front and the back. So, yeah, I mean, these, these are just really stepping the game up. But I, I paid all the money for this one. I paid 165 I mean, I, I won the auction. Let's put it that way. Well, that was a hell of a win. $165 worth of win. But, I mean, you go S90V, carbon fiber, titanium, blah, 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 ceramic bearings. Still, I think you stole it. I think you ought to turn yourself into the cops. You done stole it. We got a knife sale coming up. Knife sale. Now, for the Patreon members, the $5 and $10 members, they get two days without the public to interfere. It's on the 17th. Every month, they get their sale two days before it goes public. They can buy what they want off the table. Many times they're buying 35 to 40, 45% of the knives, okay? And you know they're gonna be the good ones, right? Or mostly the good ones. So when it goes public, you're gonna see, God, so many knives are sold. Yeah, know what? $5 a month, you can be in that group, okay? And you get a koozie 
and a staker. You all, I'm going to also do, I am doing some exclusive video that will get posted on, on Patreon and the public will never see it, right? $10 members, really big time. And I know this sounds cheesy and stuff, but I'm offering you benefits that are going to give you more money than you're paying me. Okay, because when you save that 40 or $50 on that knife that you've been looking for and it shows up on a table sale, even if it happens twice a year, there's your $10 a month right there. Not counting, if you send me two knives per month, I'll sell them for you and I only charge you the shipping to the final buyer, actual shipping, plus a $2 handling, packing, whatever charge, right? So if it cost me eight bucks to ship it to the guy, and two bucks, there's 10 bucks. It's a $300 knife. You spent $10 selling a $300 knife. Do the math. Put it on eBay. See what they charge you. 10%. That's 30 bucks. And you ain't paid shipping yet. Okay? So I'm just saying, just by sending me a knife or two a month, you know, plus finding the knife that you're looking for for $30, $40, $50 less than, than you, you saw, see it online. You're making money doing that, right? So, and, and, there's a drawing every month. There's a drawing every month. This month's drawing will be between the S1 Baton, S1R Baton 2, and this little lovely Spider Co. Zome. Zume which is a glow in the dark. Okay, Endura. All right, so close to, this one actually posts for on White Mountain is $104, so there you go. This one's probably 75 or so. So that's what we're doing right now. As the Patreon $10 group grows, the value of the giveaway item every month will also grow. Remember White Mountain Knives, use the LTK discount code, get 10% off any and all knives. You can use it multiple times a day on multiple knives, anything on their site, and uh, use it as many times as you want. People are telling me, yeah, they use it all the time. It's a great deal, gives you 10% off. Have you noticed, have you been seeing sales tax charges on some of the online retailers? I have. I haven't on White Mountain. So 10% sales tax. I buy a $200 knife from ABC. That's 20 bucks. White Mountain? No. And I get 10% off. So it's 180. No shipping charges. Bingo. What's that? $20, $30 less? Uh, that's starting to add up. God, all this sales tax stuff for this online stuff is crazy. But government's got to get its due, right? I mean, I thought I lived in Sweden, a socialist country there for a minute. <sighs> Just throwing that in for Linus. I know he'll be watching this later. Oh, by the way, I was getting ready to do a video on the CTS XHP, the Kiku, the SOG Kiku XR, which, how does that happen? I mean, it's a flipper, plus you can flick it, drops right back down in place. This is really cool. So I was doing a little research on it, and of course, they made a really big Kiku back in the day. This is Kiku Matsuda, of course, the Japanese knife maker, and this was done in 2013. Os 8, beautiful blade, all that. So I was looking online to see if I could get one somewhere, used, whatever, new old stock, and I ran into this place, Optics and Ammo in my search they were like number five in my google search for the 10 the ku 1011 which is what this large folder model number is do not go to these people do not use them for anything make sure you don't this is a scam okay this is not real go to the better business bureau when you google optics and ammo better business bureau this company is in Houston, apparently, but they got like 20 reports on them from consumers who bought like a Microtech knife or this or this or this. Never got their money back, never got the knife. They're getting scammed. Um, they've got an F rating with the Better Business Bureau.
do not use them. They took 180 bucks from me. Lesson learned, gone, money's gone. Uh, but they said, oh, our credit card machine's down temporarily. And of course, we don't, use, we don't get to use PayPal. PayPal won't let us because we sell ammo. So just give us a Zelle payment to your bank and we'll ship it out to you. So I gave them a Zelle payment through my bank. And uh, yeah, they kept my money, wouldn't respond. Oh, they'd respond and they'd taunt me. This is a one guy thing and he's, he's being a real jerk. He doesn't have this stuff in, in stock. One of the other commenters uh, talking about it, how they got scammed, said, yeah, everything's always in stock. Yeah, I bet they got 100 of these from 2013. What do you want, bet? Any color you want, too. <laughs> Sucker. So, okay, I spent the money just getting the word out here. They've got a Facebook page. They've got an Instagram page with, like, no followers and no postings or something. Uh, but it's a scam. Don't go there. You cannot use your credit card. They go, oh, the machine's down. No, I think the, the bank has pulled it. Uh, of course, PayPal, they're not stupid. They went away. So all they can do is get you for a direct payment. Or you send them a money order or a check. Good luck, buddy. That money's gone. So don't even think about it. Sorry. And if they see this and they want to take legal action against me, please, please let me talk to somebody. Please. That'd be great. I'd love to. I'd love to talk to the DA, actually, in Houston which I probably will be doing. I already put in my Better Business Bureau complaint. So be careful. I, th I kept thinking I was on Optics Planet. Optics and ammo. Optics Planet. Not the same. Okay? Be careful. Also, I'll post a thing for uh, Bevel Edge Knife Sharpening, uh, Kevin Lewis. I just got a knife back from him that he sharpened up for me, but it really wasn't for me. It was for my buddy in Sweden, Linus, so sent that. I got him a left-handed Gemini, Kaiser Gemini. I mean, he's left-handed. It was like, oh, you can get one? Yeah. And so I sent the scales to Blades We Love. I sent the blade alone to Kevin to sharpen up. But he's, Kevin's a great young guy, and he helps his folks out in the small New Hampshire town in their, in their deli and stuff. Uh, so keep him in mind. He just does it to make a little extra money here and there. And his rates are very reasonable. He does a great job. You can see all that stuff on his Facebook, but click the link I give you and take a look. He pays me nothing, okay? And I, I don't want to be paid by him to do anything. He's just a nice guy. And, and you know, I'll talk about like Dave Warren, Two Your Knives, do business with Two Your Knives. Dave and Rebecca are wonderful people. They got a wonderful family. They're in Kentucky and, and, and you know, support these people. They're Americans making money, doing whatever they love in the knife industry. And yes, I support them. And do I sound cheesy like I'm a huckster? That's fine. But Dave Warren doesn't pay me anything. And neither does Bevel Edge. They ain't paying me nothing. Okay, I don't get a check from anybody. AdSense for the click ads. Aren't they obnoxious enough? But I get a check from them at least. Well, I don't get a check. They just deposit. But it's a few bucks. It helps. Okay? So... Strop, $48. That's got diamond stuff on it. This has just got that zinc oxide or whatever. But these are nice because it's synthetic, so it won't warp even when your mister system is blowing the mist over here. It's not going to warp rubber feet on both sides. So you can lay it on the table, and the compound won't come off on the tablecloth because it's raised above that. And so you can have two different types of compound, or none. None. You can just use the leather, okay, if you want. And it's got a hole for hanging it up on the pegboard. 48 bucks. I pay the shipping. And the shipping's been running. Oh, God. They're almost a pound. So it really runs about $8 for shipping. So there's 40 bucks, And then I throw in a microfiber thing and some alcohol wipes and some stickers. So it's not a big money maker. But I just thought it, it's a hell of a good product. Maybe it takes a hold someday. We'll do a Generation 2, Gen 3, whatever. I don't know. But we're just about out of those two. I think I've got maybe 15 more, and we're done. Okay, so if you want one, uh, take advantage. They're really good. They're actually really good, and I use mine all the time. Actually, I have two of them because I have different compounds on the front and the back of both. So, knife requests. 
got knife requests because this is the end of our program, right? But you want knife requests. You know what I want? Little old me. I want my Para 2 in Rex 45 back. So if you got a Para Military 2 in Rex 45, and you might think about mm, maybe you do some swapping or something like that. Give me a buzz. Another thing that's always been on my list I'd like to have is an Ontario knife company, Bagwell Hell's Bells Bowie. Good luck. I know everybody wants five, six hundred bucks for them. I ain't gonna pay five or six hundred bucks for that knife. It's not. It's not that high end of a steel. Uh, you know, back in the day. I saw when they first came out, man. I think, what were they, 165 bucks or something? So, but, I mean, if you want to do some swapping and some money and this and that, and you got a Hell's Bells buoy, yeah, get a hold of me. Hell, we could talk about it. Hell, we could talk about it. Ivor, Forrester, Ivor. I'll give you his, his email address for Ivor. Uh, he's got some knives. Booze, Blade, Smoke, Mini. Black stone wash handle, unused, good as new, all original packing, $195, or your money back. BRS, Evolve, Eon, E-O-N, right? Unused, good as new, all original packing, $265. And Chavez, Ultramar, Sangre Street, Satin Blade, Black Micarta Onlay, unused, good, you know, like new in the box, $270. Now, the Finch. Runtley Black G10, KME Sharpen, but that's it. Otherwise, it's all original. 115, okay? Spyderco Native 5, lightweight, S110V blade, that blue FRN handle, KME Sharpened, otherwise unused. 110, all original packaging, everything. Civivi McKenna, scales, backspacer, dyed dark blue by LTK himself. I remember doing that McKenna for him. So it's a blue McKenna that I dyed, unused, brand new, 60 bucks. Uh, Ferrum Forge Mini Archbishop, black G10, KME sharpened, otherwise it's all brand new in the box, 65 bucks. So there you go. There's our requests. And uh, sorry I got political on you with uh, the LTK thing, but I mean, I I'm really a little upset about people calling me down because I have a Love Them Knives hat and now it's a sign of racism. Go figure. I, what, what the hell is this world coming to anyhow? Um, oh, and they ought to talk to the, <laughs> to the African child that I support through Child Fund International uh, because, yes, that child is black, is African, and sends me letters here and there back and forth. But, you know, racists are still racists, aren't they? And you guys, take care. Have a wonderful day. You know what we do around here? We love them nice, so you stay sharp.